just one second Benny. so i'll go ahead and share a small deck i have and and then we can get started all right Okay, I guess we are ready. All right, cool. So, uh, thank you for uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Benny, and welcome everybody to Cryo's uh, Winter Reviewing uh, Big Variable Series. This is a fireside chat with none other than the co-founder of Flipkart, Benny Bunsen. Uh, he's here. Welcome, Benny. Thanks, Ajay. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's really nice to have you here uh, to be able to come and talk to our audience today. I'll give you a quick uh, introduction to our audience as well, right? Uh, it consists of hungry developers from across the country, across the world, right? Uh, aspiring developers. Uh, they're also a huge community of uh, cryo graduates as well as cryo uh, learners and students who are going through their learning journeys on cryo as we speak. Um, and we have also just kicked off our Winter of Doing event, which is one of the largest tech externships uh, in the country. So uh, there are some top startups giving us projects uh, that are open. You know, uh, people are sort of used to doing these coding challenges. How about project challenges? Right? Yeah. So uh, they're all here waiting to listen to you. Uh, so maybe you want to just, you know, say a quick hi and uh, welcome them to the program yourself. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the program. And uh, I've been associated with Creo uh, since its beginning, so it's great to great to be here and uh, chat with all of you. Yeah, so Bini is actually one of the investors in Cryo as well, so just a quick disclosure right there. Anyway, uh, so Bini, um, uh, we'll, let's get started. Let's go back to the beginnings, right? Um, started off as a student at IIT studying computer science. Uh, you've also been interested in computer science and programming, even way before that. Why didn't you tell us a little bit about, uh, about those beginnings? Yeah, so I got uh, introduced to computers, uh, luckily, uh, in school. Uh, at, I think around in class four or five uh, is when I remember. And uh, I think my love for sort of uh, computers and programming started, uh, it was kind of love at first sight. So uh, I, they used to be like a half an hour sort of small period every week that uh, mm -hmm. we had for computers. Uh, and I remember I would, uh, I would spend a lot of my sort of lunch hours and uh, any other free periods. Uh, I would have, I would go to sort of the computer lab as much as uh, possible, even back in school. And uh, I was a sort of above average student at the time, not like uh, sort of uh, the best student, let's say in class, but in computers, uh, on the com only in the computer subject, like I was just way ahead of everyone. So, uh, uh, and I was uh, almost the only one in school who could code as when they started teaching us coding and all of that. So, <laughs> so it was, uh, 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 again, it was something which uh, I was really, really interested in from uh, very uh, early days. 
then when i obviously got to iit delhi uh, uh, in 2001 uh, we obviously there had sort of the best of <clears throat> students from uh, across the country and everybody almost everybody sort of was uh, quite good at uh, at computers and coding uh, and stuff right. and there again i i i was again a sort of good uh student there from a computer science standpoint again i wasn't uh i i didn't get very deep into any particular thing so i was sort of a generalist mm-hmm. trying to learn more and trying to learn one thing one subject within computer science uh, well and uh, yeah so those were sort of the early uh, days of Uh, on the education side and then uh, when it came to placements uh, i basically chose uh, placements of doing a mass basically options were whether to do a job or to uh, do a masters or a phd or to do an mba mm-hmm. or to actually do a job in consulting or uh, in banking uh, which a lot of my uh, friends were also uh, uh looking at i think at that time i decided that i wanted to stick to computer science and uh, sort of interviewed only for computer science jobs and uh, got into one in bangalore in a company called sarnoff mm-hmm. uh, which was doing sort of computer vision much uh, earlier than it and machine learning much before it became sort of mainstream uh, right. so it was a little ahead of my time there so i quit very soon <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I I did some uh, research and found that you know you worked on some pretty cool um, image recognition kind of solutions yeah, yeah, yeah. around you know automatic car navigations and things like that. Yeah, automatic car navigation, figuring out sort of lane detection, lane algorithms. detection yeah. uh, using um, microprocessors uh, uh, and also number plate detection. Right. number plate matching and all of that uh, all of that stuff yeah. yeah back back when it was not yet so cool today yeah, it's so far right now right 2005 <laughs> 6 when it was just very early yeah. yeah that's incredible that's incredible so um uh, you know you joined amazon shortly after that um and you worked there for less than a year and you were like huh no maybe i want to do one of my own things yeah uh, what kind of prompted you to you know you, you were at a great place and i think back then uh, amazon did have some significant challenges uh, it was still way early on right so what yeah. was that journey like yeah. yeah yeah so after this job at sarnoff uh, <clears throat> while at, at this job at sarnoff i kind of could see that yeah the work was actually from a technical point of view i was doing like very good work uh, and solving like Try, uh, trying to solve these great problems, but I could see that the company wasn't doing that well, and mm-hmm. there wasn't uh, a lot of application for the work we were doing, uh, or the company was not able to figure that out. So I could right. see that it won't be great for for uh, the career to stay in the company for longer. Although the work was great, so made a tough decision of uh, moving to uh, to a company where. Uh, which was a lot more closer to the internet where which was sort of really the thing which was happening and taking off so mm-hmm. uh, and that led me to uh, I, and that's how i got into amazon but again at amazon uh, i mean as you said it was still like not very early days but i mean was, uh, still 2007 uh, uh, they were sort of in the midpoint of their journey and uh, doing a lot of things we i uh, me and sachin both worked at uh, at the aws division and okay. uh, trying to build a paypal competitor at that mm-hmm. time uh, on the payment side uh, which again unfortunately when i joined them uh, it was sort of losing momentum losing steam and losing losing direction really when the team didn't have too much direction nothing much was happening mm-hmm. so there was not much a lot of work to be done so uh, so i was uh, basically pretty bored and uh, when you are bored you think of uh, i think too many crazy things and one of the crazy yeah. things was what else you can do yeah, yeah exactly so, yeah like why do a job at all and uh, uh, let's uh, we should try to do something on our own and sachin was also having similar thoughts so 
mm-hmm. that uh, that's how we said okay let's let's do something let's you know, do a startup together yeah so let's let's look at that journey right so both you and sachin competent developers sort of able to build anything that you wanted right uh yeah that is the effort. only thing we knew uh, so we had no business understanding we right. had like absolutely no business skills at all the only skills we had was uh was given a problem we could figure out how to build uh sort of uh, given a technology problem we could figure out how what right. what to and how to build yeah sure and uh you figured out that uh, e-commerce was pretty nascent in india uh very early days and then you said okay let's just build an e-commerce company like that just like that right yeah. uh, how does how does that decision happen like there's so many so many problems you're looking at so many things you can build and obviously both of you have the skills to build it um, yeah. how do you zero in on something like e-commerce yeah i think e-commerce uh, we we looked at a few different types of problems at that time we thought of uh at that time google maps wasn't as big uh, or as accurate uh, very early days mobile phones weren't sort of the mainstream thing right so we thought of building maps for india that map maps could be an important platform uh, we thought about uh, bus tickets as well uh, in travel uh, we thought about a couple of other mm-hmm. things but then we saw that there is this thing you can do in e-commerce where you can create a comparison shopping engine uh, sitting at home Uh, which is only code like it's not e-commerce but it's just comparing different websites so you can just code it from home and you know you can uh, and people will come to your site to figure out the best prices across different websites and mm-hmm. then uh, you will sort of earn some commission fee so that's the idea we started with but as soon as uh, within a couple of months of doing research we figured out that there were, we figured out actually that in india there were no good e-commerce sites like we we as customers ourselves would not buy from any one of them and sure. that when we said that okay if this is the state of the art of e-commerce then uh, we got a very strong feeling that we could do it uh, in a way which the customers would love to buy from right yeah. uh, and we could create a uh, shopping experience like that and that's when we said okay let's do let's do e-commerce rather than doing a commerce thing okay all right so how much of that initial flipkart product and it was bare bones right i think you sold books first yeah. and i think you used to go and do the shipping yourself in the beginning while building these products uh, the the platform and everything yourself how much of that did you build yourself uh also we were just, i mean the two of us uh, in the team uh, when we started so everything was built uh, by both of us i think we hired our first developer two years after we started so in 2009 i remember yeah we or one and a half years after we started mm-hmm. so for the first one and a half year 18 to 20 months uh, all the code all the front end back end everything was uh, written by Uh, both me and Sachin. Uh, Sachin wrote most of the front end and the, did the design work. I wrote all the all the back end, all the cataloging systems uh, uh, and the supply chain systems. Uh. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, most of them think of Flipkart and they think it's a big company. There's an engineering team, uh, but then the seeds of that is two people, sort of driven, passionate, and yeah. the ability to write code and yeah, you yeah. sort Especially of plowed through it two years. Powerful. Yeah, I think in 2007 you couldn't have started an e-commerce company without being an engineer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think today there are so many tools and <clears throat> platforms available to really get started, and then you can hire a team once you figure out your product market fit. Mm-hmm. But I think back in 2007, like that was a big differentiator that we could just build stuff on our own uh, from a technic uh, technology standpoint and uh, and not sort of pay salaries uh, for tech talent which are high, right? So mm-hmm. I think that. that was a big reason for for sort of our low cost so we, uh, we we hadn't raised any money for 2 years before right till we st- uh, after we started so so without uh, being able to bootstrap for 2 years and build uh, build a platform uh, uh, which became the biggest sort of uh, seller of books in the country very soon uh, was only possible because we were we sort of were able to write code <laughs> <laughs> lessons for all the listeners here today learn to code learn to code right so you know uh, you you've built a global business 
uh, you know, uh, in, in admittedly a very difficult market to enter. You know, trust and quality are all very important, difficult problems. And you discovered a lot of these as you grew uh, cash on delivery. I think probably the first e-commerce store in the world which offered that option yeah. as well. So there's a lot more um, to building a business than just coding. So how did you go about, what was your learning journey like beyond the f- first two years of Flipkart? How yeah. did it go? No, no, even in the first two years, the only thing like building a business takes many sort of skills, right? I mean, there yeah. is, you need to understand marketing, you need to understand uh, supply chain, especially in an e-commerce business, you need to obviously know technology, which which is the only thing we knew. So we didn't know marketing, we didn't know supply chain, we didn't know people management. Uh, mm-hmm. So we were just software, we weren't even managers. We were just two two software developers right. from Amazon. So, so there was a lot more we didn't know, and there was only one thing we knew. So, so it was all uh, sort of learning by doing uh, yeah. and learning by making sort of mistakes uh, uh, on, uh, in all those uh, in all the areas. And and then it was about learning by hire. I think what really worked for us, we got lucky with, was that we were able to hire hire people who were better at us than a lot of these things, in a lot of these things, actually including in technology, and then learn from them and uh, be more of sort of the integrators uh, sure. of uh, various things uh, and uh, guiding sort of the whole team towards the vision, overall vision, uh, rather than being trying to be the best at any of these ourselves. So for example, our first hire, uh, he hired uh, Sujit, who's now co-founder at Kudan, uh, he came in, he took over sort of all the business development and uh, supply chain uh, right. work from me. Then Mikin, who was our first CTO, uh, he came in, he took over the entire sort of technology, uh, right. team building and technology platform uh, responsibilities. Uh, and like they were 10 times better than us in uh, in both of these things <laughs> uh, uh, functionally. So, so I think uh, that was really the secret sauce. Right. Uh, that worked for us. What were some surprising things you learned in the first two years? It's just you, it's still you and Sachin, right? So things that were probably obvious later on, but you were surprised. Oh my God, this is what we need to do. Some epiphanies during that time. Oh yeah, I think uh, too many epiphanies. I guess. Uh, I guess one interesting story was. Uh, so we like, since we hadn't raised any money, we didn't have any money for marketing, right? I mean, how right. do you get customers? Mm-hmm. And uh, so we there were uh, there was another company started by IT Delhi uh, two IT Delhi seniors called Chakpak. It was like IMDb for India at that sure. time. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so we we basically met them a couple of times. We, we in those meetings we figured out they had solved something called SEO. Search engine optimization. We didn't even know what that was. So <laughs> we're like, okay, this SEO thing can be uh, uh, can be valuable for us as well because I mean, it can give you free traffic. And then yeah. Sachin spent some time with them, learned the tricks, and uh, we implemented it, it over three four months. And then one day it started working. So we went from like getting three four orders a week to getting like ten orders a day uh, consistently uh, in one day. And that was just uh, like an amazing. So there were many, many epiphanies like like that. Like you would basically just uh, figure something out by reading online or by meeting someone, and learning from people, and then uh, then you would apply it, and, and uh, right. things would magically change. Cool. Yeah, I think getting those initial customers also is challenging. You have to trust some small startup to send you a book by mail. And yeah. you're just wondering, right? <laughs> yeah. Who are these guys? Yeah. All right, cool. So, um, you know, uh, some important skills that are very, uh, like as you grow into the role, into the company and the company is growing, it's getting traction. It's been a couple of years. You've gone from books to also electronics uh, and things are looking bright. You're able to raise some funding. What are some important skills and learnings that you pick up along the way that make this kind of growth and journey possible? Yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, in any sort of entrepreneurship journey, I think first the first core skill 
and mindset that you need to pick up is that you need to be a learning machine i mean that you need to be able to learn sort of you have to because ultimately you have to be a journalist uh, if you are uh, you have to get sort of many things to work together so you have to understand a lot of things uh, uh, from first principles and so you have to really have a mindset of being sort of a learning machine uh, and then you pick up uh, i think as you sort of go along the way you pick up uh learnings in uh, again many many areas uh, a lot of functional learnings i mean if you are in the business of e-commerce you need to learn how customer service works how supply chain works how merchandising works how pricing works how technology obviously works right. uh, how uh, marketing uh, and growth marketing works right so so a lot of those functional aspects uh, you need to understand and then you need to understand people most important is Uh, how do you hire uh, the right people and uh, how do you create an environment and a culture where they can uh, deliver their sort of best work and uh, and how uh, how do you sort of create that environment so i think it's kind of a constant learning journey uh, around these areas and uh, you just uh, keep learning and getting better at uh, all right so let's let's sort of go to like a more macro kind of try and figure out the entire tech ecosystem in india today is very different from the days when you started flipkart yeah. there's an ecosystem um there's so much support available um so you want to talk a little bit about you know like the first 10 years of the indian sort of tech ecosystem after you started flipkart yeah How that kind of grew yeah, around think, you yeah. that's a actually great question so so the way i i sort of look at it in hindsight uh, since we started in 2007 so when we started there were like very few companies uh, indian sort of product uh, consumer uh, companies uh, there was nokri make my trip and then we started there was red bus uh, doing tickets uh, bus tickets as well but not much else uh, that comes to comes to mind right and that was a time when there were 30 40 million people online uh, again very few people had seen startups very few quite a few developers in india who were working for product companies global product companies like we were working for amazon there was google had set up something small here and microsoft had been here for a long time adobe so so some of the so there was uh, uh yahoo was there in a big way so good amount of talent uh, thankfully was there uh, so that was when the sort of and uh, vcs were like again far and few like six seven vc firms total sure. at that time. so that was kind of the startup and tech ecosystem and then the first wave was really about companies like flipkart uh, mintra started ola right mm-hmm. uh, a lot of these companies started in a desktop first world yeah. uh, doing sort of the first things uh, you do in in, the, in an internet economy so e-commerce apps uh, that kind of uh, that kind of thing and uh, and then since 2012 13 i think the major shift started to happening towards mobile and that's when the number of uh, Uh, a number of new e-commerce uh, new technology startups uh, started as well so food delivery uh, swiggy and zomato and uh, and uh, a few other sort of models as well uh, started at the time uh, in fintech a lot of fintech also started paytm uh, mobile based sort of payments uh, things like those hadn't sort of happened before at all right so so a lot of that started happening and then uh, some talent also started coming from the us uh, from the valley to to india at that time right and then the indian talent ecosystem also i think uh, evolved along with the startup uh, sort of ecosystem and then came 4g which really changed the game uh, so which was 2016 17 really 17 and then by 18 2018 uh, there was a, like a really big acceleration in number of users and uh, then you could see a lot of companies starting which were not based on western models so all of this till like 3g internet was still 
copy paste of Western models happening. Uh-huh. But once four G came in, and we had like four five hundred million people online uh, with four uh, G, mm-hmm. uh, we've now we've started to see companies doing very India specific uh, problems. Companies like like if you think about EdTech in Veda uh, in EdTech, there's Vedantu, uh, which is uh, about J uh, J coaching, uh, IT J coaching. Uh, there is Ninja Card, which is B two B. Uh, uh, grocery, there is Udan, obviously, which is B two B for Kirana stores, right? So a lot of these uh, uh, companies have come come up, which have no global parallels. Sure, and I think that's uh, that's pretty exciting. The other interesting trend which has been there is has been of uh, uh, software companies uh, also starting to mushroom in a big way, uh, and which uh, Fresh Desk is a great example. Zoho. Right. Uh, and now many others, Postman and uh, Zenotti in the recently, you know, it's just uh, also come out uh, with a big round. So, so I think that's the other large sort of trend happening where Indian entrepreneurs are now creating global software companies, right? Uh, potentially global software companies, right? Uh, right. And uh, that's uh, so. Those are the two big big trends that. Uh, very in uh, India focused sort of global first models for to solve for India, mm-hmm. and then Indian entrepreneurs creating global sort of software companies. Right. You know, as the focus uh, turns towards problems in India that are still waiting to be solved, uh, age-old industries, the way they work in India, waiting to be disrupted. Um, where do you see this heading? What are the next couple of you know problem spaces or uh, traditional businesses that are going to be impacted. Where do you see these things going? Um, especially with the skill, you know, there yeah. are a lot of Indian entrepreneurs capable. They're developers, you know, yeah, they're ready. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, so I think uh, it is a great sort of time in the journey of the Indian startup ecosystem because we have all the ingredients almost, yeah, as you said, there. So. So we have uh, we have the entrepreneurs. We have a large pool of technology talent mm-hmm. uh, and potential technology talent uh, available. Uh, and uh, there is capital. There's a lot, big VC ecosystem now, mm-hmm. and uh, local VCs and a lot of obviously global VCs on doing sort of uh, on the growth stage rounds. And uh, there there are now uh, more than half a billion people connected. Uh, through uh, through mobile internet and 4G and now uh, and uh, very soon with 5G, so so all these all this infrastructure and ingredients are in place. Uh, so I think the question is not of which industries will get disrupted. I think question easier question might be to answer which will not get disrupted. So I think there is going to be change uh, in every area: fintech, education, healthcare. Uh, even e-commerce, retail, e-commerce, I think it's e- e-commerce and retail, we are still uh, only scratching the surface uh, 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 from what has happened till now. A lot of, of this in the same things in B2B commerce as well. So so I think it is it is going to impact all, I think almost all areas uh, of, of uh, the economy of the society mm-hmm. in the next five, 10 years. You know, have you come across, you know, any of these companies working on an idea that is so out there that it just kind of surprises you that, you know, oh my God, is that really a thing? Uh, some very surprising problems that you, you never thought were problems, but then in hindsight, you're like, oh yeah, why not? So there's one company that uh, I am an early investor in, which, uh, which is not a, uh, which is not like a tech company. It's more like a biotech company. Mm-hmm. Not a not a computer technology company, but right. they are exactly like that. So they they're in a the business of uh, 3D printing uh, human tissues, and they are trying to create a. Now they're working on creating a artificial cornea, okay. uh, uh, so which can solve corneal sort of blindness or corneal problems because the only other solution is uh, getting uh, a transplant. Yeah, and you can only get only so many corneal transplants. So the number of patients uh, that need uh, 
uh, that need a solution to the number of transplants available is like ratio of one is to ten or something. Mm -hmm. so you just can't solve it through transplant. So like that, yeah, that's an example of something which, like, I could never think that in a couple of entrepreneurs in India would be would be uh, would be going after. But it's been amazing to see what people are now taking on any sort of any kind of challenge uh, globally and then trying to solve. Right. Yeah. Pretty cool. Amazing. What kind of people will drive this this change in the wave of companies that's coming um, yet to come, already being built? What kind of people does it take to build these? Who will drive this change? Well, I think it is uh, regular sort of uh, people who are. I think people who have uh, who want to again uh, who are learning machines who want to solve large problems. I think you need to have. I think you need to think big. You need to be. You need to have the mindset of thinking big, uh, and have a big sort of vision that uh, that you are uh, motivated by, and a sort of core purpose. Of that uh, technology, I think, is going to play a huge role. So, ability to, at the minimum, ability to use technology, if not code. Ideal will be if you know how to. Uh, how to how to write code, but uh, I think that the minimum ability to sort of use technology to solve uh, large problems. Uh, I think those those are going right. to be critical critical ingredients. Uh, so you know we'll touch upon the um, opportunity landscape for a little bit, and then we'll open up for audience questions. There's a lot of people uh, waiting to ask questions, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs on the call today, you know, the, uh, they've seen these successes around them. Uh, many of them students, you know, waiting to graduate in a year or two and some early working professionals, two, three years. A lot of idealism, a lot of hope, some hunger, passion, and drive. Uh, they're looking at a, such a wide opportunity landscape. Uh, how do you want to sort of break it down to them and tell them, okay, you know, these are things that you can do. Here are some problems. How do you just gauge the opportunity landscape for all of them? Yeah. I think the most essential thing at, at this stage at, at which the audience seems to be, I think is to really optimize for, for maximization of your learning. Uh, rather than optimizing for, let's say, maximizing your salary that you're going to make in the next two years or optimizing for the brand of the company that you are going to work for the next uh, two years or something like that. I think if you optimize for uh, uh, for learning the maximum over the next two, three years, I think the dividend, dividends that's going to pay for... Uh, the next 20, 30 years is, is, is just going to be amazing. And I think what you might want to learn will depend on, again, who you are and what kind of things uh, excite you. Uh, if you are a journalist, then I think getting into roles where you, you sort of get to solve uh, problems which require multiple skills and uh, uh, like problems in marketing or product management uh, etc might be might be more relevant uh, if you're more of sort of a specialist uh, let's say in technology then problems sort of uh, more towards how do you architect large systems and uh, how do you write sort of scalable code and stuff like that uh, scalable applications those might be more more interest uh, more interesting uh, so I think what you want to learn depends on really who you are and what your interests are uh, and where you want to go, but I think optimizing for that first uh, would be my big sort of biggest advice. Also, one thing about thinking big versus how foolish you need to be to think big as well. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that yeah, kind of goes together. So I think you you have to be uh, you you have to think big, and uh, I think it's okay to fail. It's okay to be sort of be foolish and think big and uh, and fail, and you. I think that learning experience can be very valuable in the next thing that you do. All right. All right, Vinny. So uh, uh, thank you for all of that. You know, I have a lot of audience questions. We've already shared a link where everybody can ask their questions. Uh, so I'm going to pick some questions from the audience yeah. and then ask you, okay. Um, 
So there are first question is you know there are turning points in the evolution of startups where a decision can make or break it. Right? Was there a moment like that in Flipkart's journey that sort of turned its fortune from will this survive to we really have something going? Yeah, uh, not in that way, but there were, as I said, I mean, I recounted that story of the sort of Google, uh, the SEO marketing working for us. Which, uh, which, which was quite pivotal in, in our initial growth, uh, in our initial growth stage. I think uh, there was probably cash on delivery was again another important sort of milestone where if it hadn't worked, then uh, I think the pace at which we grew would have been like uh, much, much slower, like two to three times slower than uh, than how much we do. But I think, again, luckily in our journey, we didn't have that kind of a survival. I think once we got the SEO going, we were growing like 25, 30% month over month. So we never looked back. It's a good space to be, right? <laughs> I can't complain. Um, okay, so I'll go to the next question. Um, how did you get your first 10 customers? How did you the get your first? Offer? Your oh, first 10 customers. customers. First 10 customers. Uh, so obviously, I mean, I will disregard friends and family uh, sure. as uh, first 10 customers. I think our first customer came because he, because uh, I think me or Sajin, we left a link of Flipkart at somebody's, on somebody's blog and uh, that you could buy books here. And that person just followed that link <laughs> and bought a book uh, within like 10 minutes of landing on our site. And we asked him that, why did you do that? Like, we are just a new website. Like, how did you buy something in within 10 minutes of landing on, uh, on us? And he said, I was looking for this book for like last five years and I saw it's available on your site. So it was three, 400 rupees. So I said, you know, like, what, 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 what is the max that can go wrong? So, sure. I, just, so I think it was a lot of these kind of stories. Uh, we basically, some sort of, some search engine marketing uh, some very small money we spend and some of uh, this just uh, putting our, the word out there in different communities, uh, uh, campuses, etc. That's how we got our first few customers. What was the most you know challenging thing about um, gaining the trust of customers at that very early stage? Sure, you know, a few first 10, 20, 50, 100 customers. Trust yeah. plays an important role and you're still looking at, you know, 2007, 2008, when yeah. it's very risky. You don't know who to trust on the internet, especially in India. Yeah. So I think what worked for us was that people, almost everybody had a really amazing experience the first time they bought. And, uh, and there were thankfully again, enough early adopters uh, trying to buy books online. So uh, so I think once they got that experience, I mean, we promised to deliver your books within three to four days. Most people got it in between one and two days. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that time there was just no other way to get that kind of a service in India. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I think that just built a lot of, lot of trust, uh, with our customers. And then we had policies of almost like not written, but unwritten policy of no questions asked sort of returns and. If something, anything went wrong, we would just uh, replace or return or refund the customer. So, mm -hmm. so I think that those kind of things also just created a lot of uh, a lot of trust and and then word of mouth. Then I think once somebody started buying, we could see that five people in their office complex also started buying. We were just shipping uh, a lot more books to the same address. Uh, Right. Uh, uh, after we got our first order from that sort of copied it address, I think that those kind of effects are getting very soon. So, you know, Amazon started with books, you started with books. Is it a conscious decision to start with books? Mm, not really. I think books was probably the easiest in India to get maybe Amazon's reasons are different, our reasons are different. So in India, there is... Uh, it is the easiest category to start with because there are, uh, I think one big thing which really was in its favor, there are no taxes on books. So when you buy or sell a book, there is mm -hmm. on the category itself in India because it's an education based category. So the government doesn't tax it. Okay. So it just makes your job of doing business easier, right? I mean, you don't have okay. to manage all the taxation uh, when you're buying it, selling it, 
uh, etc and there are no import duties as well so uh, export duties as well so it just becomes much easier they were sort of cheaper to uh, also for the customers to buy as well so and it was also easy to create a catalog of books so every book has a isbn number special yeah. code mm-hmm. and catalogs are available on publisher websites online so we could just write scrapers and scrape them so it was many things sort of came together to make books the category easiest category to start with so dev- developer friendly category developer yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it turned out to be a marketing friendly category as well because uh, there is a book on every topic so yeah. so when you search on google we would like show up almost like for many many searches even on related to books because there is a book on every topic so if you are searching for uh, sort of any topic uh, if we had a book on that topic we, the book would show, show up in google search so it would be right. a marketing hack as well yeah and then there are bloggers writing about everything Yeah. and you just figured out this thing called seo and affiliates so why not <laughs> all right cool so uh as flipkart grew into gradually grew into you know from few employees to few thousand employees uh what would you say were the changes in your decision making process and how did that evolve to support the scale of the company yeah so i think in if a company grows in sort of the speed at which we kind of grew we, the whole model really changes almost every 18 months so i think at flipkart we would kind of take a clear look at how uh, things are going what were we doing uh, and uh, what were we not doing which was relevant to the scale at which we had gotten to every 18 months we would kind of do an exercise take Uh, take stock of where things were, and then uh, make sort of large changes across uh, focus areas. Of what are the things to focus on for the next couple of years? Then, wh- uh, who in the team should focus on what? So, from our design standpoint, uh, what to do? And then, on the processes standpoint, like how how would we how do we execute uh, as uh, the business becomes more complex? and uh, the number of people in the team grows more so what are the processes we need to uh, uh, put in what are new processes we need to put in what do we need to simplify uh, so i think it was a continuous uh, continuous process we got it wrong a lot of time we were late a lot a lot of the time in putting in processes for example i remember we really put in very strong uh, uh, business finance or uh, sort of accounting and financial processes only like by end of 2012 and okay. that was because 2012 was really the first year when we we had started sort of missing our quarterly targets right uh, before that we were beating them uh, <laughs> hands down so there was uh, really no need to 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 do that uh, but uh, i think once we started missing them uh, the need became quite quite clear so so i think it was again a lot of trial and error just learning right uh, by failure uh, in right. a lot of these areas all right so i've got two more questions um uh, what was your uh, interesting question what was your routine in your 20s like <laughs> your daily routine in your 20s what did you do <laughs> ah routine in my so i started flipkart when i was 25 so Maybe we'll talk about Flipkart, like twenty, like you know, your a typical work day. We we'll talk about a typical work day. Typical work day at Flipkart. A yeah. Typical work day at Flipkart would be solving whatever fire was on at that time. <laughs> <laughs> There is no typical work day in a startup, so I think the yeah, typical work day doesn't doesn't really. Yeah, mythical. Fit. Yeah, doesn't exist. I think it could go from like negotiating a fundraise to hiring a developer to hiring a. uh to to talking to a uh, electronics partner to to anything so i think it, uh, there was no sort of yeah typical day yeah i think t- today you get better uh, founder friendly kind of term sheets back then still very early in the game in the indian startup ecosystem as well right yeah. very hard negotiating with all the <laughs> vcs and the investors <laughs> All right so you know um, what separates a great software engineer from a good software engineer is there a distinction oh um, 
definitely there is a there is uh, i think great software engineers can clearly i think build sort of things which are just way more elegant and scalable uh, both functionally and uh, not uh, so not just scalable in terms of sort of user or uh, but also i think scalable in terms of uh, functionality that uh, you can just keep adding stuff around the core in a in a very seamless uh, seamless manner so so i think there is definitely uh, a big sort of uh, gap between uh, a good developer and a great developer all right um my my last question for the day okay it's, you know it's it's on creating these great developers and also skills that they have and you know skill based education is now retaking its shape in the world right so what's the importance of college degree versus the skills you need versus college dropouts who kind of pick up the skills on their own uh generally the role of skills based learning yeah and focus on that yeah i think my from my experience what i've seen is both as sort of as a student uh, if i see what did i learn uh, back in school then in college and then i mean what did i learn while i was working uh, uh, firstly in couple of jobs then working at uh, flipkart uh, i think the more i learned the most when i was doing uh, at least personally so i think uh, even in college when i was doing uh, my projects was when i felt i was learning the most rather than when uh, sort of preparing for exams or something so right. i think the skill based uh, 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 learning by doing uh, based sort of models which are coming in i think are the right way to go and that was one of the big motivations for me also to invest in uh, uh in uh, cryo as well uh, so uh, so i think that i strongly believe that that is the best way to learn uh, that some personal experience uh that uh, that i have gone through as well so mm-hmm. i think it's great to see uh, the direction in which this is going and i think education in 10 years will be will change in a major major way globally i think that's right. that uh, it's not going to look uh, anything like it does today in in all areas i think not just in programming or coding or computer science but in i think in many other areas will that accelerate the entrepreneurial mindset change that oh, you yeah. keep hoping think, yeah definitely yeah i think the i think it will uh, the mindset change the mindset training will also become sort of core to uh go to the curriculum uh as to speak yeah all right so bini we have a large audience um any parting message that you want to share with them before we wind up for the day yeah i think my uh, last message would be that i think it is a great time to be a developer or to be an entrepreneur or to be in the sort of uh, uh area of technology so there are many many problems to solve i think find out what you are passionate about uh, and uh, optimize to sort of be at a place where you will have a great leadership great manager and you can learn the most uh, and uh, then sort of uh, go from there all right yeah thanks a lot uh, thanks a lot for joining us vinny you know as always very inspiring uh, a whole generation of college students look up to you as an idol and an inspiration and one of the first names of companies that we get you know we say what do you want to do and at cryo when we have people filling out applications uh your dream company and flipkart is usually up there uh, on everybody's list of companies so i think you know you've you've done something phenomenal you've given you've enabled a whole generation of you know future engineers to dream and dream big and think that they can achieve really big things and compete in you know a very competitive global market as peers you know um so that's fascinating thank you so much uh, for joining us here today uh and and to all the audience thank you for joining uh, thank you for the spirited participation as well as the questions 
Uh, we have many more in the series, uh, big variable series uh, coming up in the next couple of days uh, and hope that you will be able to join us for the rest of the um, you know, fireside chats as well. Yeah, thanks a lot, Vinny. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. Bye-bye. All right, thank you.